Get excited, Whataburger fans. Our one-of-a-kind mushroom Swiss burger is back. And now it's an all-time favorite. If you love mushrooms, you're going to love this burger. Two patties, two slices of Swiss cheese, two layers of mushrooms. These mushrooms are beautiful. It's a really good balance between hearty and savory. That au jus sauce on top. The creamy au jus sauce. It really sets it apart. Just adds flavor that makes you go, wow. It is just absolutely amazing. It's not just a mushroom and Swiss burger. It's a Whataburger mushroom and Swiss burger. All right, God bless you guys. And joining me here at HNLC Studios. You know, here in the city of Plano, Texas, most of you know, I you know, transfer a lot of different shows. You know, as I get ready to come on the program, you know, I try to be balanced as I can in terms of getting, the, you know, the accuracy of, uh, of coming online. But, you know, you're dealing with so many different nations, so many different countries. Most of you know here at HNLC Studios, uh, we're not what we call a, a traditional church. Uh, we're an international studio, and I walk as an international apostle. Not to be facetious or say anything negativity, but letting you know, you know, my position that the kingdom has given me as I continue to move forth. But the word that's coming from the kingdom of God, and I always continue to thank all good friends out there in Africa, uh, different people out there in the Panama cities, so over in Nigeria, uh, Lagos, Cameroon, the Philippines, and all those out there in the Arizona area, Chicago, all the different areas here and outside the states and in the states. We're always trying to make sure we get things on track here. We run different stations, Mountain Central. Sometimes we run um, uh, Central Standard Time or Mountain Central Standard Time. So we balance between the California states and different countries and different areas. But we don't want you guys to be confused about the work we do at HNLC Studios. Every month we have uh, actually one uh, uh, community service meeting that takes place at one of our local hotels here at HNLC Studios. And we also constantly do a main work. It's actually coming off our actually uh, internet stations, all our radio stations. We run both satellite, we run both internet as well. We try to get the most of everything we do at HNLC Studios. There's 24 different stations that run out of this particular uh, platform. It's not just a podcast. We got FM radio stations as well as AM stations that take place here at HNLC Studios. For most of you, try to find out information about us. We don't have a whole lot of fancy stuff we don't want to get into all that we believe you know if you're going to walk to talk you know if you're going to talk to talk then you got to you know you got to you got to show up with what you got you know everything looks good sometimes in the face of people but when it come down to getting on the field and playing the nitty-gritty and you know, sometimes you got to find out what you're made out of so you know here at HNOC Studios we don't do a lot of uh, competition that's not our job to do competition our job is to bring forth the word to give you something that's going to help you in your walk with Christ as we get start here at HNOC Studios I want to thank God for the man of God uh, Dr. Ronald Robinson is going to be with us on the 15th uh, tonight we got uh, Yeshua Messiah Ministries that's going to be Steve and, and uh, Joyce Lazar out of that Arizona. Matter of fact, they're coming out of uh, Arizona and they're going to be with us on tonight on our Axie BTR station, which is Blog Talk Internet Radio Station. Got a few things lined up here at HNLC Studios. As I said before, we try to pull forth and do what we can do to help the ministry to move forward. And it's a lot of switching back and forth. I do as far as getting prepared here at HNLC Studios. Not a snap. I got to pray, constantly pray. We're going to talk a bit about, about that today here in the book of Jeremiah. But I'm going to let the music kind of solidify itself here just a bit and let it kind of run its course. And we're going to come back here in just a moment and we're going to hear what the Word of God is speaking here at HNOC Studios. Once again, thank you guys for joining us here. It's always a pleasure. Um, give me a few minutes. I'll be right back with you guys with open prayer and let's get started. Hey, just kind of get your Bibles prepared to go to Jeremiah 33. We're going to talk about that and we're going to move forward here at HNOC Studios. God bless. Wow. When Jesus was. 
Jesus walked. When my Jesus walked, He washed my sins away. Father God, we thank you. We bless you. We honor for this opportunity as we prepare ourselves to go before the throne. Father God, we ask for your wisdom, your knowledge, protection through the Spirit. Father God, even as we begin to lay ourselves in conduit to do the work you call us to do, Father God, let us focus clearly. As being what you designed us to be here on earth, Father God, not running out of opposition, but standing in our lane and completing our assignment to do just what you have called us to do. Father God, I thank you for the blessings. I thank you for all those that you put around me. I thank you for my wife. I thank you for my daughter. I thank you for my family. Father God, I thank you for all the listeners, Father God, those both none in present. As we continue to move forward, Father God, and do what you declared and called us to do. Father God, I'm actually let the word of the scriptures not be interpreted, but let it be uh, solidified through the spirit. That even as we speak, Father God, it will touch the hearts and the minds of every individual. Then as we pray for the very women and children uh, that have prepared the children to go back to the elementaries, the high schools, or whatever it may be, Father God, we know it's a lot of destruction, things that came on the earth, and a lot of things that are dealing with the... Uh, just a lot of chaos, you know, the word of God decrees and declares, even as we pray about the Oklahoma, uh, not uh, Oklahoma, but the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the the shooting that took place in El Paso. Y'all forgive me for that. But there's so many things that are going on in different places, the El Paso shootings, the Ohio shootings, the incidents that taking place in Oklahoma. We see a lot of different things that's going around around the earth. But the word of God declares and decrees that we should not be shipped out of the very presence of the power of faith. That we should stay there, believe and declare and decree in the midst of all that is going on. Christ says, call unto me and I will give you rest. The Bible says the heavy latents, all the things that touches our lives in the name of Jesus. All the things that bombard us, that make us feel other than what God declares to be. It seems like it's not moving well. But God has declared a word according to the kingdom. He said, call unto me and I will give you rest. He declares according to Psalms 46, he's a very present help. A very present time of need. Lord, I decree right now in the name of Jesus that even as I speak, Father God, the words will be solidified in the hearts and the minds of the people. That even as you go into the school system, Father God, all the teachers, all the students, all the men and women of God, Father God, who's taking place, to make themselves better in the system, Father God. We realize and understand, Father God, the only way they can move forward is they call unto you. Father God, bless them. Bless my daughter, all our friends, all our partners, whatever it may be, all those who occupy those public school systems, both private and parochial. Father God, illuminate, declare, decree, call things in position on their lives. In the name of Jesus, we set a hedge of protection from every angel dispersed from the kingdom of God to assign each one of those children to have a personal relationship with you. As they move forward, Father God, and begin to push themselves in such a way, Father God, they will not understand and realize that the anointing and the power, the grace is upon their life. All they have to do is call unto you. Let it be one, Father God, that will speak a word into their life, Father God, will change their whole household in the name of Jesus. I declare, Father God, even as I speak, Father God, it's never nothing of myself, but through the power of the mighty and most high God. I decree it right now. I declare it. It's a third heaven word. That means it's going forth. It will and shall not go back void. But it is already accomplished and done all that in therein. Father God, these things we speak not of ourselves, but through the power the presence of the most high God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray, Lord. Amen. It's always a pleasure, man and woman, God, to continue to move forth and be with you guys. It, it's, it's just... Um, it touches my heart, you know, and I came home, when, you know, out of the service today. Not well out of the service today. I'm always thinking of service because I'm constantly moving. Most of uh, most of you guys are kind of give you a, you know, 411. Uh, you know, a lot of them think, well, Charles, you're behind the mic or not. No, this is a very complex and sophisticated system. The system runs everything on its own. As of right now, you hear me by the mic. Everything you hear 24 hours is already pre-recorded from years of service that we have here. They run their pre-recorded services. This We labored putting it in position. But all of this stuff is designed to move on its own authority through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Our night shows, our midnight shows, our morning shows, all those shows are actually on a system that's designed to pick and choose whatever it chooses because of what we put in on the previous month. It runs month by month. The only time we got to get in most of the time is to see us on Sunday services. Those are pre-recorded services. And sometimes those pre-recorded services comes up maybe months later. 
You know, we got a series we teach it on. Some people request series. We go back and pull those series. We just automatically touch the system, and it designs to do what it's meant to do. God gave me all this information. I'm telling you, man of God, I couldn't plug a plug in. But when God gives you a vision to do something, it's always more than what you can see. You don't have to worry about anyone trying to copy what you do. Because whenever God gives you a, uh, he gives you a plan, it, when he made it for you, he threw the mold away. There ain't going to be no other plan like yours because it's the only one that God made you. So don't ever worry about what somebody's trying to do just like you. Because God is not a copycat. He's not a duplicate God. God is an individual power moving God. When you bring him to that level and feel that he's got to do something on the same level, then you got it all twisted like Twizzlers. Because that's not the kind of God we work with. We work with an omnipotent, omnipresent, divine, ingenuine, creative God. The one who designed all the heavens and earth and you and I that dwell in it. The word of God decrees a plan over here. As I think about the process before going to this word, I came in the house today and as I was coming to the studio, you know, you know, school starts. Just a little short story. School started, you know, for my daughter and such and such a beautiful young lady. I love my daughter like, oh, you love your sons, your daughters. I love mine. But I came in the day in the studio and I forgot. I say I called out Marcella and it hit my heart and I broke down. And man and woman, God began to pray because I'm so used to being around her. She's such a jewel. She's such a love. She's such a morning star. And I thought, man, she's not here. She's going to school. But it's a positive thing because she's going to make herself better for the future. Whenever time, whenever time God t uh, sees time to take me home or my wife home, we want to make sure she's got the best training she has so she won't have to slip and fall short of anything in the life that God has given her. And I just thought about that, man, the woman God. I said, wow. Yeah, it goes to show you, you know, you never miss your <laughs> you never miss your well until your water dry. And that's what a lot of relationships also, you know, in terms of being with the kingdom of God. You know, you try to do things on your own, you call to God, he's not answering because why? You never built a relationship. When you go into bombarding situations, circumstances and problems, you call on friends. They're not there. You call on whatever, nephews, nieces, everybody you call on, they're not there. But God said, Whoever called on my name. That's what it says in Psalms 46. He said, I'm a very present help. I will not no means push you away. God said, I'm always there. He said, I'm a very present help. Listen to what he's saying. In Psalm 46, he said, I'm present. That means he's a nano God. He's right there in the midst of whatever it is that you may be dealing with in your life. I don't care what it is. I don't care if you're going to orange cones, ditches, stop signs, ups and downs, whoop de doos whatever it may be. The word of God decrees and declares when you call on me, I'm a very present help and a very present time of need. Though it may be, seem like storms all over the place, but God said, I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a refuge in the midst of a storm. I will know, I will rescue you no matter what the proclivity or the calamity may be. God is always there to help you in the midst of all of your storms. The Bible says, cast all your cares. He said, I mean, everything. Cast all your cares on me because I am the one that careth an ongoing caring for you. The Bible says, trust in me. Lean not to your own. Acknowledge God in all my ways. Everything I do, I acknowledge God. And the Bible says, he's a direction giver. That's what the word of God lets me know. I may walk through shadows of valleys of death that seems to be bombarding in my life. But the word of God said, I will take you through because the word of God is a staff. I may have run you through that thing so quick. That's what the word of God, Psalm 23 says. Yea, though I may go through. He never said you're going to stop. Now, you can win the shop on your own. But God said, if you go through. See, the rod is the, is the word. The word of God is the Holy Ghost. The Bible said it leads you. Into all path. Proverbs 3 and 5 say it's a way that seems right. Am I in there anybody? Proverbs, matter of fact, Proverbs 18 says it's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end is a death. Now he comes back in Proverbs 3 and 5. He said, lean not to your own. Listen to what he's saying. Man's thoughts and man's thoughts of what he perceives to be right is limited. The Bible declares the word according to the book of Isaiah. He said, my thoughts, listen to me, my thoughts your thoughts right there. You don't even need to go on my ways, your ways. You don't even got to go that far. It's just my thoughts. Come on, work with me. My thoughts, your thoughts, my ways, 
your ways. When you lean to your ways, Proverbs 18, but he said, it's a way that seemeth right, but the end is death. God don't want to have you falling in any other calamity in your life. He said, rest assured that I am God. God work with me now. Now, I am not a God. That's what he said, that I would should lie. Nor am I a son of a man. Y'all come on, get go with it, that I should have to repent. Man will, Lord, in the, they will lie. We human. That's why mercy and grace is upon us. Because we don't always seem to think and do the things we need to do. You might as well tell the truth and shame the devil. Everybody who proceeds to be something that they're not, they already deceived themselves. The word of God say, our job is to rest on the Lord, depend on the Lord, lean not to our own understanding, but in acknowledgement, him in all his ways. There's a direction. There's a call a Holy Ghost GPS. God said, I will map you through this thing called the shadows of the valleys of death. The word of God decrees and declares, we go to the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah the prophet, Jeremiah the prophet, he speaks a word over here in the book of Jeremiah. We'll look at this close. We're going to work out of two different, several different editions, and we'll get some, get some clarity out of this word as God begins to bring it forth to reverence, and as he begins to give me illumination and understanding on it. Then we're going to look at it in the Amplified Edition, and we're going to go over to the um, CE, uh, CEB. It's called the Common English. We've got to add something else. We will do just that. But get your pens and your pencils. Let's get ready. Your pens and pencils, paper, whatever you want to have. Let's get ready. I prefer you co scripture rather than just iPads and those things like that. Keep a Bible in your desk at work. Keep a Bible in your car. Don't always depend on the cell phone electronics. That thing can distract you whenever you're looking at the Word of God or hearing the Word of God. Somebody's popping in. Somebody's popping from Instagram. They got an Instagram message for you. Somebody's popping in from Facebook. Somebody's popping in from Tumblr. Somebody's always popping in. But I'm telling you, in that Bible, when you solidify your thoughts and plans in the Word of God, there is no distractions. There is no distraction because it's the word of God. And I said this to all men and women of God, both young and old, when you go into church, don't depend on carrying your cell phone. It's going to always distract you or divert you from what God is really speaking to you in the season that you're going into. Because the cell phones all kind of pop ups. There's nothing wrong with you taking your iPad. As long as you understand to silence your messages. I don't know how you work those things sometimes. But I know some ways you can silence all your messages that come through. So you won't have any interruptions during the course of time the word of God is coming for you. Better than that, you don't even have to try to set it. Set your minds on a B-I-B-L-E of your choice. New International Version, Amplifier Version, New King James Version, Common English Version. Whatever it is that you read the best out of, get that and replace that Bible. With your actually original, what that cell phone Bible, with your original Bible. I hear man of God talking about, hold up your cell phone. Hold up what? Or you just going to fall into the, elect the electronic age. Well, that's just the way it's. No, it's not. It's because you want to go roll with what they tell you rather than what the word of God tell you. He says the B-I-B-L-E, not electronics, but the pages. The Bible says it is in the scriptures. He didn't say on the LED scrolls. He said in the scriptures. The prophet depend on the scriptures that they wrote, the pages, the things that God gave them to write for your understanding. The word of God decrees and declares over here in the book of Jeremiah. The Jeremiah the prophet said, moreover, we look at Jeremiah 1. Chapter 1, he says, moreover, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah a second time. While he was yet shut up in court, they was holding him in prison. Let's think about this. Some of your greatest prophecies, some of your greatest uh, utterance come with you in your worst situation. I don't know about you, but some of my greatest revelations have came to me when I'm in the most unawkward situations. Y'all understand what I'm saying? The Bible says, once again, it's a way that seems right. Some of us say, this can't be God, or why can't it be? It was the same thing with Ezekiel. It's the same thing with Moses in the midst of his troubles. The same thing with David in the midst of his trouble. God was dealing with them in the midst of their calamities. Now, why not you? God deal with the God deal with God, which is Jesus Christ here on earth during the course of time that he was going to be the last sacrificial lamb. OK, God took him through. So what are you saying? It's not God. Jesus could have said the same thing, but he knew his purpose and why he was coming this way.
Well, when God gave the word to Jeremiah, he said, as prophets are going to suffer some things because the word of God must be made manifest that when a prophet, a true prophet speaks to, I ain't talking about these old made up, want to be sound good and want to deck themselves all up and look all pretty before people. I'm talking about the true prophet when he brings a word. It doesn't matter his style or way he look. Now, one thing we are actually service done and we actually call on we look at the style the look the name the title but god will use some of the most unusual things am i talking to somebody that'll bring a word in a season that even when you're not focused with your spirit you will look at the wrong thing and you will look at it based on its performance and the way its physicality look rather than what the word of god has declared for you to hear i remember i was going to a what we call one of those race tracks uh, i think it was a race track not the qt's but the race tracks and there was a man of god who sat in the car and he's sitting that old raggedy thunderbird i think and i was passing by he said man of god i said yes sir the bible said when you call you immediately respond he didn't tell you what Pastor Ellis, Bishop Ellis, uh, uh, this, that, and the other prophet is a prophet. He said, man of God. And I turned quickly. I knew what my signal was. I said, yes. He said, you're truly a man of God. You walk in grace and power. I said, yes. He said, come here and pray for me. I came over this car and he opened the door and almost knocked me down. But I'm telling you something, man of God. When you look at the exposure of what I saw when I got in the car and opened the window of the car, it didn't even look like he maybe looked like it was a total. I'm telling you, I don't know how hell looked, but it could have been close to the smell. A stench was so bad in the car. The word of God said, loose it in the name of Jesus. Declare that every substance abuse that he's dealing with, God said, loose it by the authority of by the words that I must speak to you. And I, brother, that I be loosed in the name of Jesus, loose from the tobacco, loose from the alcohol, loose from the, the heart condition, loose from the very position that you're in, loose from the lesser finances in your life, loose in the name of Jesus. I mean, loose everything. I said, Lord, clean it up. And I declare by the word of God that even as I spoke that word, that when he went home that night, I believe a visitation of an angel came to the man of God and cleaned that man up. He probably moved in as a millionaire now, not knowing, not that I'm trying to get accolade for what he did or what God done to him, but it's given over to God. That my job was to give the word. When I gave the word, the word moved forth. The Bible said that him that believe all things, doesn't matter what your current situation look like. All things are possible. You know, I hear a lot of people getting a lot of the cliches that you got to look like where you're going, where you're going. The Bible said, according, when you come from the kingdom of God, or when you're born through your mother's womb, you come out naked. Naked as you come, naked as you don't go. You got to dress like a priest. You got to dress good. You got to have a suit and tie, this, that, yada, da. They try to hear everything that make you feel that you want to leave a little, look a little bit more better than everybody else. Baby, I put the jeans and the tennis shoes on. Now I can go down. Don't think I can throw down with the best of them. But I put the jeans and the tennis shoes on, the, the jeans, whatever I got to have. And I walk in there and my heart begins to receive the word of God. It receives the word of God. The Bible tells me according to, what is it, Romans 10 and 17. This is what he said. He said, now he didn't mention anything about your outer garments. Now the Pharisees had a big deal about that. The way they trolled your priest looked at, they staffs, the place, the best seats in the house. But I hear the word of God speaking in the spirit as he began to pronounce the word over in the Romans 10 and 17. He never said nothing about my physicality. He told me faith come by hearing. Am I in there? And hearing come by the word of God. That's what we got to understand and realize. That faith coming by hearing. And hearing is orchestrated, designed, and planned by the direction of the Holy Ghost. That whenever he say, move, I move. Jeremiah said, moreover, Jeremiah 33 and 1. He said, moreover, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the second time. While he was yet shut up in the courts of the prison sin. Thus say the Lord, make thereof the Lord that form. Look here. Form it and establish it. The Lord, he is named. Now, look at the King James Version. Thus saith the Lord, the maker thereof, 
the Lord that formed it. Listen to how he's saying that formed it. Now he's speaking in Revelation and we're going to go over and look at some things. And we know he's talking about the earth. He said, say, he said, thus say the Lord, Jeremiah or well, one and two, thus say the Lord, maker thereof. Now he's talking about the earth. The Lord that formed it, created, designed, and engineered everything. Am, am, am I talking to somebody? To establish it, to the Lord is his name. Man or woman, God, you got to be careful to stop running in the renegades. Am I helping somebody? You will never see me run up behind a whole lot of things because I need to know where that thing is birthed from. When I have no indication where it come from and the lineage that it come out of, then I, you're not going to get me to follow it. A lot of us are running behind a whole lot of things because of the style, pizzazz, this, that, and the other. But God said, that ain't it. That ain't it. That ain't it. That ain't it. Notice what the word of God says when we understand we're going to go back up to the first verse, but we're going to look at the second verse in Jeremiah in the Amplified Version, and we're going to get a good understanding of what he's saying in that second verse. He said, in the Amplified, say, thus say the Lord who made the earth, the Lord who formed it to establish it, the Lord of his name. The Bible said everything was created on the word of God. The Bible said, matter of fact, when you think about the word of God, he said he exalted his word above his name. Now, the word of God said he was established on his name, but the words that he spoke and he spoke it out of his will come into fruition. When you look at the word of God, you go with me here. And I just want to, I just want to, I'm going to mess with you a little bit. There ain't nothing wrong with me doing that. I'm going to tickle you a little bit, not to the point to make you feel opposite, but let's go over to the book of Genesis and let's talk about the formation and the creation. When we talk about how the word of God was already in format and fruition in full form. Through the Holy Spirit to perform and do everything it designed to do. The Bible declares according to Numbers 23, 19 to 20, he said, I'm not a God that I should lie. And I'm not a son of a man that I should have to repent. Listen to me. The command has been given. When God commanded his word, everything began to fall in place. The word of God decrees, declares according to Genesis two, uh, Genesis chapter 1. We're not getting off of this particular Jeremiah. But we're going to bring some things in the performance. And we're going to bring things in the fruition. And we're going to bring together. Look, not from education, but through revelation. Man's thoughts. Look at God's thoughts. And now God is speaking through the mouth of his priest to bring this word to you to bring the very thing that you need to hear that come into full form. He declared according to the book of Genesis. He said in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Am I in there with oh, Jeremiah 32 and chapter 2 and verse 2? Listen to what he's saying. God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void. Look what he's saying. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. Look who moved. The spirit. The spirit of God moved. Upon the face of the waters. And look who said, God said, now that the spirit is positioned to obey the word of God. This is why the word of God said, the spirit of the Lord, that the Holy Ghost was one that's going to lead you into all truth. Now that he's got the spirit attention, he's going to command the spirit to do what he say according to his word. Because his word is not going to go back void. Can I go back to Romans 10 and 17? He who has a what ear, let them what hear. What who has to say? The spirit of the Lord has to say to the church. He's not talking about the physical building. He's talking about that was in you. Greater than he that is in you than he that in the world. I don't got nothing wrong with you going to physical buildings. It's good to train disciples and get them ready to send them back out. But you must not rely on the building. Stress, strain, heart condition, headaches, problems, proclivities. Trying to do all this stuff to deal with the ministration part. When God hadn't told you to do anything. But you're trying to stay in competition to please and appease the people. Listen to what he says once again. In the beginning. I'm establishing a foundation on the base of God's foundation. God established the work based on his word. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was our form and void and darkness upon the face of the deep. And who moved? The spirit of God moved upon the I hear the I hear the I hear a demon. Trying to educate, give me an educated word from what they read out of a book. And the word of God decreed, and it comes back in the book of 1 Corinthians. He said, this stuff has got to be revealed through the spirit. For the spirit searches all things. I'm moving in the spirit. 
You can get all the education and all the alphabets behind your name you want. But when your mind becomes the move opposite, what it said in Proverbs 3 and 5, lean not to your own, and then not as God in all his ways, and he will direct your path. See, sometimes you can get too much education, no revelation. That's why people run up behind anything that says sound good to them. They don't, they, they, they want the performance, the way it looks. They run through any kind of concert, any kind of event, any kind of seminar, anything. They don't even pray about it. They just want to move because somebody has told them about something they know nothing about. About. And they find themselves sitting in there getting fleeced by that thing and why it lives high and mighty on its throne and while you suffering and you getting a word that ain't even pleasing unto God. Let me help you here in the name of Jesus. And we go back over here in the book of Genesis. He said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was our form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of the Lord began to move on the face of the waters. God said, let there be light. And there was light. Notice the performance of what God is. He's speaking just as he's speaking in your life. And God saw that the light was good and he divided the light from the darkness and God called light day. And darkness came as night and even in morning was the first day. Let me get that number five to you once again because you got to understand that what you moving and what God called you to be. He's saying God called light day and he called darkness night. Listen to what he said. He called darkness. He called night. And he, even as it was the first day in what's called in the morning, in other words, evening and morning was the first day and God said there he go once again speaking the word of God through the Holy Spirit let there be a ferment in the midst of the waters let the let it divide the waters from the waters and God made the ferment and divided the waters which were under the ferment and from the waters which were above the ferment and it was so I mean God is speaking a word in the name of Jesus y'all gotta help me here I don't know why the Holy Ghost got me here but I takes me back over to Jeremiah 33 look what he says once again in that second verse he said and God said the maker thereof the Lord that formed it be established the word established Genesis told you everything if you didn't catch it you better get it he established everything and the Lord is his name the creator the designer the engineer of all things even when you got your raggedy stuff in it, you think you know a little bit more than everybody else because you got a few alphabets behind it. Ain't nothing wrong with you getting an education. But baby, this stuff here come by revelation. And if you don't get what you need to get got, you're going to get got. Because you got to understand that in the midst of where you're moving, it's got to be a Lord that's going to design and move you in the area he wants you to be in. He says over here in this particular amplifier version, thus say the Lord who made, in parenthesis, the earth. The Lord who formed it to establish it, it, establish it, establish it. The Lord is his name. Who established it? Any but one person you need to look at. If God made something to put you in, see, even when Adam and Eve came in the midst of the garden, you more worried about what the, what the snake did to Eve and Eve did to Adam. But God is trying to say, but even before they even came into fruition, I had already put things in order, put them in the garden. And when they didn't take over the garden, I already had a plan to bring on another Adam, which is called Jesus Christ. And he's going to die for all the remission of the sin. Matter of fact, when you go back over to the book of John and you look at chapter one, the, uh, the, the man of God, who, what was that brother name? Oh, Take again, man. God, what was it? John the Baptist? That Bible says, "There's none one greater than He are." John the Baptist speaks in First John at twenty nine. He says something like this. He said, "Look, see him that coming whose shoes I can't lace." What he done to take away all the sins of the world? Adam may have misquoted or mishapped what he did in the garden, but what God done? He said, "But when I re up." And bring you somebody back a little bit more greater than Adam. I'm going to show you that when he died this time, I'm going I'm to I'm conquer all death. I'm going to conquer all sin in the name of Jesus. And the Bible tells us that, that whoever believe on his name, the Bible says he shall be saved. The word of God gives you an understanding to realize that in the midst when you're going through the limits, he said first you got to come to salvation. And through salvation, you got to learn to live a kingdom life. And kingdom life is already in position when you anoint and pick the words out of your mouth. What is that? Romans 10, 8, 9. What sayest thou? The word of God. Where it's near you, it's in you, it's in your mouth. If I begin to confess, believe, declare, and decree that God is the head of my life. The Bible says, I shall be saved. It ain't nothing even, you, you won't have to worry about that. 
Because now when you understand that salvation is yours, then you got to start living like a king. The Bible says you are on the earth. You to be a conduit. According to Romans 4 and 17, your job is to speak, declare, and call things in position that be not of the world. Can I tell you, Luke 10 and 19, behold, I've given you power. Not only power to tread upon serpents and scorpions on over all the power of the enemy. Come on, Ephesians 121. For above all principalities and powers and dominions, not only named in this world, but everything which is to come, the word of God decreed and it declares over in Jeremiah 33. He said, For God said, The Lord, the maker thereof, the Lord that formed it, established it on the, he said, established it on his name. The word of God says in the third verse, Listen to me, call unto me. Call unto me. Let, let's, let's, let's run it back. I need you to get an understanding of what's going on here. That God put you here to be a conduit. That when he spoke the model prayer about you, how you should govern yourself here on the earth, that even when you fall short, he said, you got to be able to pray that our father who are in heaven, how to be thy name, let thy kingdom come. Listen to me, let thy will, you got to be in the will of God. See, he comes back and he tells you, probably, see, when you're in the will of God, you can't lean to your own understanding. You, you can't worry about all the certificates and alphabets you got. You can't worry about the accolades of people or who they say they are. Matter of fact, Jesus called them naysayers. He said, who do they say I am? Am I in there, anybody? I'm getting you to see something. Let's go back here in the Amplified Version. Moreover, the word. Now, we're in the Amplified Version over in Jeremiah 1 and 33. 33 and 1, excuse me. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Look, he said a second time. Now, I'm going to show you something, how he came the first time. And he warned Judah before the excursion came in on them. I'm going to send a heathen by the name of Nebuchadnezzar. I'm going to send a devil. And I'm going to show y'all that because you rebelled against my word and my name, you fear not to do what I call you to do. King Hezekiah, I'm going to deal with you. I'm going to call him to come down and deal with Judah. And when he deal with Judah, he's going to cause y'all to fall. And everybody that's in Judah going to go into the exile. But I'm going to release them back after a certain amount of years. As I begin to do this very work, because I got to clear out some stuff. Sometimes, man, you got to clear out some stuff from around you. Sometimes you want a God to bring a Nebuchadnezzar in your life. Declare all the gook from around you, all the so-called wannabes, all the ones who's talking about you, all the ones who's putting you down. Lord, cause an excursion to come on my life. That, boy, when you bring me out, it'd be more than I ever see in my entire life. The word of God comes back over in the book of Jeremiah in the 33rd chapter. In that particular first verse, he said, moreover, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the second time while he was still shut up in the courts of the guards saying, thus say the Lord made the heavens in the earth. Sounds like Jeremiah 32 and 17, don't it? Well, my stretched at arms, I created the heavens and the earth. But let's stay right here in 33 and 2. Thus say the Lord who made the heavens in the earth or the earth, the Lord who formed and established it, the Lord is his name. Go back to Genesis and understand what I'm telling you here. I'm trying to get you to see. It's, it's no need for you to try to look at anywhere else. There's no need to you to keep on putting all of your trust in men. Am I helping somebody? The Bible says, you. I want to know you one-on-one. -on -one. See, this is what gets me sometimes. What's wrong with you when you got to keep on having somebody try to make you feel to be something that you're not? Why do you keep on running behind people trying to establish yourself because you want to know them? Because you want to do all these things that make you feel good and say you did this, that, and the other. The Bible tells me you got to have an individual relationship. Let me ask you something, man, woman, boy, child, not the boys and girls, but the men and women. Why is it that when you meet somebody and it seems like God brought them into your life, you seem like you might want to get to know them a little bit more intimately. I ain't talking about on the other end. I'm talking about for us who they are. You might want to have somebody pull this background, pull this credit report, check them out, see where you work at, see what kind of education you got, rather than just rushing into something because you're looking at the lips and the hips, the body in the chest and all these things has nothing to do with what God is about to do with you. God will bring somebody to you to look like a wimp. And I hear people complain, I want a man or I want a husband. I don't want anybody to look like this. And I ain't got to say you got to eat no gazelle at night. And I ain't saying you got to lay in bed with a gorilla. But what I'm trying to get you to understand, but when God brings somebody in your life, you got to be specific about what you want. And if it's what you want, then you got to understand and realize if you can't get it, then Jimmy crack corn. Don't worry about it. Keep on moving in the name of Jesus. Because the word of God tells me like this, for those who wait on the Lord, 
The Bible is going to renew you in the midst of what you said. If you ask and call on to the Lord, we're going to look at this in a minute. When you call on to the Lord, the Bible says great and mighty things will he show you. You don't have to worry. You want a husband? Then ask God. Be patient about it. You, 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 want, you want a wife? Then be patient and wait. You want the new home? If that Don't make it a God. You want a new car? You want a new, am I in there with anybody? Do you want the new job? Do you want all these things you've been asking for? And you keep on running up behind people trying to get confirmation about something that God has already meant for you to have. He told you I made man for woman and woman for man. Don't you believe that somebody is out there for you only if you wait and you continue to understand and believe and declare and decree if I obey all his commands, all his statutes, all his precepts. The word of God said his judgment won't come upon you. I will by no means bless you. Why do I get that from? Go over there to Psalms 84, 11. No good thing will I withhold from those who walk upright. Baby, when you walk upright, when a man and woman wait, please is God. The Bible tells me, I will give you the desires of your heart. Let me get back over to Jeremiah 33 and over in the second verse, over in the Amplified Version. Look what it says. Thus say the Lord. Who made, he said, I made the hell. That means everything in the earth belongs to me. It belongs to me. It's mine. It's not man. It's not his title. It's not his position. It's not who he said. I make a man do what I want them to do. I created them. I designed them. I call favor to follow your life and wait. I give you every bank to give you favor, every car dealership, every house, everything you need. I will make a man do what I want them to do. They'll scratch their head and say, I don't know why I'm saying yeah. Yeah, because you under the unction of the power of the Holy Ghost. Because now I have called the Lord. And the Lord, I call you to be able to bless me for whatever I may need. Look what he says once again. Over in Jeremiah 33 and 2. He says, thus, thus, say the Lord, who, who has made the earth, the Lord who formed it to establish it, it. He established it. When I establish something, then I bring in and give to who I want to give to. It's my establishment. It's mine. I give to who I want to give it to. I give all, I, I'll give the whole establishment away. It's me. Don't you think I can create another one? Not that it's coming no time soon, but it is coming back. You know, God said, I give you everything you need. Think about it, Psalm 84, 11. No, do I mean to whisper it? No good thing will I withhold from those who walk upright. That's your key right there. Go to the book of Genesis, not Genesis, go to Galatians. Go to Galatians. Galatians tell you right there. But you got to understand one thing about Galatians. Galatians tell you in Galatians 5 and 4, 14, he tells you, you're going to have to have love. All the laws are established on one word, and that's love. You can't do 15 and get 14. You can't bite. Kick, scratch, devour, hate, disdain, put down people, and expect good to come to you. You can't do bad and expect good to come. It's like if you don't do good, the good to come. You keep doing good, good gonna come. That's a stab that's already supposed to be. Quit hating on people. Quit talking about folk. Quit talking about you don't like this, that, and If they hate on you, love on them. You ain't, I ain't said you got to kiss them and love them and hang out with them. Just love on them. Don't hold nothing against them. Don't get on the phone and put your beaters up there and talk about them. Leave people alone. Can't you leave somebody alone without trying to put your mouth on them? That's one of the problems. You, if, if you really, the Bible says, look at it. I like to rap to y'all. I'm, I might want to talk to y'all. Y'all know I'm one of them. I'm telling you, I don't get up here and I try to be all intellectual. I don't try to be something that I'm not. I don't need no long robe. I don't need no bunch of rings. I don't need all these things. But I'm going to bring it to you just while I'm going to put it right in your face. Don't you know a lot of us, if we understand what the word of God says, let's go over here for a second. Let's, let's go here a second. I'm, I'm that stay in 33. We're gonna all the stuff we're looking at. We're gonna look at. Let's go over here to to uh. Let's go over to um. Lord help me. Let's go over to the Corinthians. Let, let's look at Corinthians for a minute. And most of y'all know where I'm going. It ain't so much that you know the scripture. You already know that. It ain't that. See, see, see you. See this is what gets me. Oh, I already know that scripture. But yeah, you see, see John the Baptist only spoke one word. Repent. He didn't give you a whole flu of scriptures and all this thing. See, when you think you got so much clergy in you, let me just put it like this. Whatever man think of himself being something that he's not. Why did he say that? Because you hadn't arrived and you never will arrive until you get out of this shell that you're in and you're going on to be with your father. So while you still here, you are. And while you still are, you ain't. Do y'all understand that? The Bible said, for all has fallen short. Don't let me get into Romans. Romans tells you, Romans, Lord, let me just get right here. I mean, I would, I would deal with you. 
And I'm, I deal with myself. The Bible says first to me and then to you. So I'm dealing with myself as well. The Bible says over in the book of 1 Corinthians. Just, just smooth with me over to 1 Corinthians. I like to say smooth. Man, just go on over there to 1 Corinthians. No, no worries. I'm going to let you roll with me up in here. The Bible says over here in the book of Corinthians, he, he talks about, even though he talks about the process of taking a cup and drinking of his blood and eating of his body and viewers remembrance of me, he tells you something about it. It's so important right here. He says in 11, 1 Corinthians 11, 28, let's look at this real close. As a matter of fact, let, let's look at it in the Amplified Edition. Now, in fact, can I look at it? Can I go to the NIV on this? Yeah, let's, let's go to the NIV. I mean, let's go to Amplified and then go to the NIV. And let's go back to the Lex. Let's go to Lexham English after that. So we got three different ones we're going to call them. First, we're going to deal with the King James Version. Let's go to the King James Version. Let's go and pop right over to the King James Version. Look at, now we're talking about our, us, how we are, why we're missing our blessings. Let's go over to the King James Version. Look at the King James Version in 1128. He says they're very clear. Don't read through this like a fairy tale. That's one of the things you got to memorize in your mind, but you don't understand the clarity of what it's saying. The B-U-T says a whole lot. It's almost like if, if you're able to. It says, but. And it said, examine yourself. He said, but let. That means when you understand over in 27, he said, whoever shall eat the bread and drink of this cup. Now he's talking about communion, but that's not look at the communion. That's talking about our personal life. Why am I not getting blessed? Why am I not receiving everything that I feel that God has in store for me? Why is it? First of all, Proverbs three and five, number one, lean not to your own. And for, next of all, we go to Proverbs 18. What does he tell you about there? It's a way that seems right. Just when you think you got it figured out, you're wrong. You're wrong. You don't want to admit it, but you're wrong. You read all the books. You, let, 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 let me, let me, I'm, 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 I'm on a help, but I want to help in the right way. Cause I really want you to understand not only what I'm speaking in the book of Jeremiah 33, but I want you to get a full scourge, no understanding what he's saying about how you come into your real revelation of how your blessing will come. Psalms 84, 11 said, there's nothing he would hold. Well, if he ain't going to hold nothing for me, what do I got to do? I'm tired of this. I'm tired of that. I want this. I want that. Okay. You calling on me. Psalms 46. Okay. I'm, I'm presently there. But that's some things you need to clear up. But see what Proverbs tell you. Not Proverbs. But, but, but well, yeah. Well, Proverbs say lean not to your own understanding. And lean into your own understanding if we can get here. And I'm going to teach it. I'm going to teach it. I'm going to teach it. When you look at this area over in the book of um, Proverbs 3 and 5. Don't go there. Just write it down. He says, lean not to your own understanding. But look what he says, acknowledge. Acknowledge. Now, when you look at Jeremiah 33 in a second, he said establish. God has established. But in the midst of him being established, you got to acknowledge who he is in you. And when you understand who he is in you, don't go before him. Follow him. The Bible says, listen to him. Romans 10 and 17. Have an ear to what? Hear. What who has to say? The spirit. Well, how do I get in contact with the spirit? First, it comes to Romans 10, 8, 9. I got to confess it. And then I got to get all the gook up out of me. The things I know that's not right. And then I got to call on the power of God to help me in the midst of all the situations that I'm dealing with. But first, my thing I will do, I got to come to confession. I to confessed it. But if I don't confess, I go opposite of Proverbs 3 and 5. And Proverbs 3 and 5, as he talks about the Corinthians, though I speak with the tongue of an angel. I have not charity. I become a sounding brass, a tinkling cymbal. Although I have the gift of prophecy, y'all better get with me. I understand all mysteries. I got all the PhDs. I got all the robes. I got all the buildings. I got all these things that make me look. I got a name that reigns out before all the people. I got all the mysteries, all the knowledge. Though I have all faith so that I could not remove mountains and I have not charity. I'm nothing. I though I store all the goods, I feed the poor, I do all the mission work, I do everything that looks good in the eyesight of people. But inside of me, can I help somebody? Inside of me, I'm failing to deal with a self-examination. When the word of God tells you 
in the midst of dealing with Christ and even in the midst of nicking at the communion, he tells you, when you deal with this before taking me into you, you must establish and know who I am. But I know you to understand who I am before you take me into you because you can't put me in no junk. I can't come through all that gook in you. All that stuff in you, that unlove, that bickering, that complaining, that gossip, that behind closed doors that you're dealing with. Hey, nah. I'm trying to get you to see. Baby, there's a fly on the wall that sees everything you're doing, and it's called the Holy Ghost. You can't come for me and laugh and smile and be something that you're not. I will, I will pull you out because I don't deal with that stuff. You may not like me because I go for me. I may be like a jail, but you may lock me up in your chamber. You may talk about me and say all oh, you want about me. But you know what? There's a day that you got to reckon with. Because the word of God tells me you're going to have to deal with every idle word. It's not nothing with me. I'm free. Because I constantly ask the Lord to help me. To be love and kind to all the people. But somehow you keep on putting your razor blade on everybody. Silently cutting them. And then they begin to bleed and you don't even offer them anything to help them out. Just like I said about the Pharisees, you put loads on the backs of the people and you don't lift your hand to help now one of them out. The word of God says you got to come to the point in your life that he said over there in uh, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty eight. But first let a man and a woman examine him or herself. And look here, check out your own backyard. As the William brothers say, you're going to have to sweep around your own back door. I would listen to a very prominent speaker, and I listen to a lot of them. I just listen to them. And when I hear them speak, all I hear them is giving words that crack nuts. Crack, oh, oh, hallelujah. Crack, oh, oh, yes, amen, hallelujah, glory. But you ain't said nothing. You got words of wisdom. But you have, he said, it, but, he, but he said over here in Corinthians, you, you, you got no charity. You got all the things that make the people sound good and, and plead and come after you, but there's no power. Let me, let me go back over here to Corinthians 13, because I'm going to get to Jeremiah out of my, my system. The Bible says over here in the fifth verse of 1 Corinthians um, 13 and 5, do not behave itself unseemly. See, 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 unseemly. Or seem it not her own. Is not easily provoked. Thinking not evil. Look at what he's telling you. Do not. Look here. When he talks about how charity suffers long. I heard Dr. Tony ever say. For those who wait. In the midst of your suffering. The word of God says according to Romans 8 and 18. But I rocking. He uses a counting term. But I rocking for the suffering at this present time. Am I in there with somebody? It's not compared to the weight of glory that may be revealed. When you understand that part, when your man examines himself, a woman examines himself, when you do an MRI on your own self, you don't need to do an MRI on nobody else. The Bible said, first let a man, look, check out your own back door, as the William brother said. But first let a man examine his or her, I'm going to put the his and her, I'm not trying to change scripture, but it's not just talking about man, even though men, you know, women come from man, but we got to reverse roll on that also. You look at Paul's word about the women stand inside of the church. He's not criticizing the women said they can't speak. He said just don't kind of come in as an authoritative figure. He wants you to teach. You got a gift. That's why he said women to be helped me. I don't walk behind my wife. I don't dominate over my wife. But my wife is right there with me. She's not a Jezebel. She's not an Ahab. She, you know, I'm not an Ahab. But she understands my role and my calling. Now you understand what I'm saying? You don't want to hear me. Because I'm trying to get you to understand something. Even though Paul talks about the silencing of the women in the church, it's not neglected them not to speak and not to use their gift to move forward. But what he's actually letting you understand and realize in that particular scripture and teaching is the photo. Hey, look, you got to understand who your authoritative figure is, not to dominate over you. But you see, see, I can't birth the child and she can't sing bass. Am I? Y'all don't like this kind of teaching. You want to read free radical teaching. You want somebody to just go say anything. Let me tell you something, man and woman, God. Anybody can quote scriptures. Anybody can talk. Anybody can get a crowd. Am I helping somebody? But it goes back to the word of God Say It's a way that seemeth right unto a man or a woman, but the end. You get caught up in it if you want to. 
I don't answer a lot of things that I don't get down with a lot of stuff. I don't hold up, I don't because I don't know where that stuff comes from. People ask me, why do you I, I don't I don't know nothing about that thing. I, I don't go everything that screams, I ain't finna jump on it. Everything that sounds, I ain't in it. I ain't finna roll. I'm excuse me, but I'm not gonna roll with it. I'm not gonna roll with it. The word of God says right here that he looks at the twenty this particular twenty eighth verse. But let a man or a woman examine him or herself to see if they of the faith before they eat of the bread and the drink. Now I may have kind of twisted that a little bit in terms of how I need you to understand it. So I'm going to take you over to the Amplified version and let it tell you itself the way he's needing to tell you. When you go to Amplified 11 and 28, go to 11 and 28, follow with me, stay with me, don't lose me. He says over in the 28 verse, over in the Amplified version. He pretty much said the same thing I just said. He said there, let a man, I'm going to put the woman in there because I don't want anybody to think Barry, thoroughly, that means thoroughly means, you know, MR, see, see, when you do what you call um, eight, uh, x-rays, it only gets the surface of things. But what an x-ray does, what an what, what MRI does, it gets the bone. It gets everything. It shows everything. It shows the deepest part of everything that's going on, the muscle tissue, the scars, everything. He said, let a man or woman thoroughly examine his or herself and only when he is done, listen to me, only when you're done looking at your own self in the mirror, as Michael Jackson said, God bless his heart, poor thing. See, you got to understand what he said. The man, What was killing him was the man in the mirror. We know the story about, most of you follow the Michael Jackson story. I, I, he still, I love all the Mikes, Michael Jordan, Michael Jackson, uh, Michael, all of them. I mean, they was all good people in my, I, I, I Pop my finger to Michael Jackson. Oh, I did, well, uh, I did that too. I love Mike Tyson. I love Michael Jordan. You know, I love all the guys. I mean, but there's something he says about examination. It's it him only when he is done. So, look here. So should he eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Now listen what he says. I'm just telling you. For if anyone eats and drinks without determination or what the discerning or analyzing or recognizing what do up look there the, what you got do you got to look at yourself what do appreciation that it is Christ he said appreciation if you just going to take the bread and you going to take the the wine because it's a traditional thing baby you done already messed up you didn't firmly understand what was going on here See, what you done, you took the bread and the wine because you looked at it as a traditional thing. You knew it was coming up. You knew you had to get on your knees and ask God to forgive you for some things that you had done that weren't quite right. It's okay for you to deny it. Just don't play with it. Don't take the bread and the and the and the, the bread and the wine in as a representation of Christ and put it in you and you know you tore up from the floor, as Jesse Perez said out there in Victory Outreach, and you know you tore up from the floor and then the check up from the neck up. Don't be doing that. Don't be doing it because everybody else did it. You're going to follow him because you're going you're gonna, you're gonna to run off the curve because he fall off the curve. That's why the word of God say, why the path? The oh, you're going to follow them? Because you're a traditional thing? Because they say they love the Lord, so you're going to run behind them. Man you, better, man, you better ask somebody. I'm not running behind nothing. I'm going to firstly check stuff out. I don't care how popular you are. I don't care what name you say you got. Because when I come before the throne of God, I got to give account. I got to give account. Because I'm going to barely make it in but what I have. I need to tell you about the story about the rich man. He let him know. If your brothers trip out up there, just like you tripped out, they're going to be right down in hell with you. Understand, he got mixed up on his priorities. He loved his money. And the Bible said, you can't love mammon more than you love me. That means things, uh, things whatever you have, jobs, business. If you don't put that thing before God... Just it's a matter of time. Your head, your head going to bust trying to figure out what's going on because you hadn't put God as the head. The word of God decrees and declares come back over here in that particular area of uh, 11 to 28. He said, you got to come to a thorough examination of yourself. You go back to the very earth, uh, very verse, excuse me, of uh, first Corinthians 13. I know I got that got to I got to get out of here. He says back in the third verse or first Corinthians 13 and three. He said, though you bestow all the goods to feed the poor. I gave my body to be burned, or I give my body to be burned. I have not charity. It profits me nothing. Listen to me. It doesn't matter about what title you have. 
It don't matter what about robe you have. It don't matter about your, it ain't about your building. It ain't about that. I'm not trying to put anybody down, but I'm trying to, I got to tell you the truth. And in the season I am, I got to tell the truth. You ask me a question, I don't run up in a lot of these churches. And I'm not going to run up in them. I'm just going to tell you straight out. Don't invite me somewhere and I don't know nothing about you. First, give me a time to check you out. I don't care what credentials you have. I don't, I'm not worried about your title because your title ain't going to get me into heaven. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to get you to see. You keep on running up behind stuff. That's what you're going to find yourself bombarding. Many of y'all have been hurt running behind a whole bunch of junk. And have found yourself in really bad positions. And now you just want to give up on the church period. Quit running up behind folk. And learn how to go in your room and shut the door and pray. Like Dr. Tony Evans said. When you get in contact with God. And you present your situation to him. The word of God say he will get involved with your earthly situation. Goes back to Psalms 84, 11. No good thing. Thing will I withhold from those who walk upright? The Bible says in the fourth verse of 1 Corinthians 13, I'm going back to Jeremiah here in just a minute. Stay with me. Charity suffers long. Look what it says it is. Kind, envy it not. Charity vaineth. For those who you think you're a little bit better than everybody else, you sedity ones, those who put yourself up, you so called want to be intellectual talkers and smart mouth speakers. One thing I can understand, I'm going to tell you about me as a man of God. I'm, I'm straight level with everybody. But when you come and talk to me, listen to me. When you come and talk to me and you talk to me like I'm not worthy, I'm out of there. I don't care who you are and what kind of prophet or whatever you say you are. You don't approach me like a man, cancel it. I'm out of there. Because my spirit going to bear spirit with you. And God believe and I declare that God going to have you to come to me in a righteous way. You ain't going to come to me with no self-righteousness. You can say all the negative things you want. But you know what, brother, sister, whoever you may be, you got to come in. You got to give account. Oh, you're going to give account. You can give all the accolades and all the friends you want with who you want with down here. And you feel good before them. But you know what? When we stand before the judge. We're all going to be swinging and dangling. And I'm just going to put it like that. Whether you like it or not what I'm saying, I'm just telling you the truth. Neck as you come and neck as you're going to go. And he's going to speak to you about the flies on your wall. Because he's going to know everything about you. The word of God declares we are in the fifth verse on 1 Corinthians 3 and 5. He says, do not behave unseemly. Seek not his own self-righteousness. Leaning not to your own understanding. It is not provoke angry, evil, Quick to get mad, quick to shut people off, talk about folk, put pick up. It doesn't think evil. Get your mind right. The Bible said, I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God. It's mercy. God didn't have to let you live or get up this morning, but his mercy and grace allowed you to give up. The Bible said, your mind has got to be renewed in the spirit. The Bible says in the sixth verse, reject it not in iniquity, but reject it in the truth. Look what he's saying. When I come to you and tell you something about I know is wrong with you, I'm talking to myself too. But when I come to you, as I talk about how men talk to men, and that's how one woman talks to women. When you think you got a little bit more plateau than everybody else, you got a heart, you got a lungs, am I? I don't need to go to the other area. You got feet, you got toes, you got nose. Am I, am I in there with anybody? You got this spirit thing flipped. You got it twisted. Because God gave you a little bit of knowledge and you think you're a little bit better than everybody else. Well, the Holy Spirit tells me in the first Corinthians over there in that 12th chapter, if you're going over to the 12th chapter, if you really want to roll with me, then I'll roll right there with you too. And the word of God makes it clear in the 12th chapter. Matter of fact, when you go to the 12th chapter, he talks about the Holy Spirit. Y'all just going to get me to move and I got to get up out of here. Because I'm telling you, when I let it go, I'll let it roll. And it ain't about me trying to be better than anybody. It's about me telling you. Because when I'm telling you, I'm telling myself. The word of God decrees and declares when you, in, when you look at it in the 12th verse, in the 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians. He said, but by the manifestation of the spirit is given every man and woman the prophet with all. That's the spirit. But don't understand. Remember now. Remember now. He understand. Women come from the men, but now they're trying to reverse the role. I mean, Y'all know what I'm talking about. John MacArthur talks about the process. If you listen to some of his stuff and good teaching, anybody who don't love the teaching of God rejects him. They reject the Holy Spirit. Now, he didn't tell you you can't speak. He didn't say that some of my greatest discernment and giftings come from my wife. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Assembly line and machine makes cars. Y'all don't roll me on that one. 
But whatever makes the product puts it in your hand that you know it's safe enough for you to carry. Whether you deal with Louis Vuitton, car shoes, whatever. It's profitable enough to put on the market. If y'all understand what I'm saying. But first, it got to come from a source. It's nothing wrong with the woman who came from the source. There's nothing wrong with her having a gift. But she got to understand her authoritative figure. Now, my wife can go into church and preach all day. I have nothing problem with it. But when she go to denounce me as a husband and talking about me and put me down and say this, that, and the other. All you got to do is look at some of these other people out here that's having life problems. Some of these main women speakers and main men speakers. Don't be badgering people. Don't go in the job and change somebody's manual that they already have. Fall in line with it. The manual has been wrote for the kingdom. Paul and all the other people have wrote these messages. But these people who come in, these Judaizers, these people who diametrically oppose the word of God and try to make up their own way of teaching and understanding. They're the ones who neglect you. They're the ones who put weight on your shoulders. They're the ones that are not going to lift you when you fall into trouble with the kingdom of God. And you wonder why you're having all this trouble and you're not getting blessed. And you started trying to push over and keep on going. As the word of God says, a way that seemed right unto a man or a woman, but the way the end is his death. The word of God declares a part of dealing with the Holy Spirit over here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. But first let a man examine himself to see if he has the faith. But he says also in the seventh verse, he said, by the manifestation of the Spirit is given every man the prophet with all. God not holding back your gift. Jeremiah wanted to that you were born with it. He's going to use you. But understand who your authoritative is. It's not to a point we use the word authoritative to condemn or put down that every gift is using equally. Take a football team, for instance. Every man on the field plays his role. He is authoritative in that defensive back position or the line position or the quarterback position, the running back position. He's established to do his role. But when he starts getting better than the team, well, we don't need you no more because you're a disruption. Oh, y'all, let me help y'all here. He says over in the eighth verse, for one is getting the spirit of wisdom, knowledge. Look what it says. He didn't say nothing about it. See, your Holy Spirit roller coasters. The true Holy Spirit don't roll the coast because all gifts, your clothes, your robe, your building don't make your gift no better than nobody else's. I believe according to the book of Matthew, chapter 25, I believe the gifts are given according to the measures, but they don't outrank each other. And that's what a lot of people got problem, especially us. We got a big problem with that, especially we, we got that real bad. I could truly say that you can't tell us nothing. We can't listen to us. You don't want to talk to us. Y'all get, I'm going to give it to you today. You may not want it, but I'm telling you the truth. The Bible says, by the manifestation of the Spirit is given every man the prophet with all. To one is given the spirit of wisdom. All this, is a, all this is a team. All this is a team. No part of the body is bigger than any other part of the body. The functions might be a little bit more. I use my legs more than part than I use my arms. I use my arm where it's attached to the finger, but I don't become a double head. Do you understand what I'm saying? He made one atom. He didn't make two atoms. Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me. He says in the 10th verse, he said, the work in the miracles, the other prophecy, another discerning of spirits, diverse kinds of tongue, interpretation of tongue. But he says like this, as he goes back to the book of Matthew, chapter 25, to verse 14, he used 11 verse also. It said, but all these that work in the same self spirit, dividing one man severally as he will, the head controls the whole body. I don't care if you're an apostle. I don't care if you're a prophet. I don't care if you're a vandalist. I don't care if you're a pastor teacher. If you're an apostle and you got a wife and she's got a gift, let it move. As long as she don't overshadow you about how God called you to do. Because normally God called her to help you anyway. But when you have these renegades out here, and I know it's a whole lot of them. you want to hear this kind of teaching because y'all hate it. Authoritative figures of the church never were designed to be handed to a woman. Get me? I'm not putting women down. Y'all want to use all this stuff about how he spoiled our spirits on all flush. Look, zip that. We're talking about establishment foundation. A house cannot be built unless it has a solid foundation. If it does, without a foundation, go to Luke 6 and you will tell you all about it. I got to get out of here. But if I get out of here, I'm going to go back to over here, Jeremiah 33. And I want to let you, yo, you got a true prophet speaking to you. I'm a hidden one, but I'm not going to put myself out there. But I'm letting all of them do all they talking. I'm letting all of them do what they want to do. I'm letting all of them yap the way they need to yap. I'm letting them talk all the things they want to talk. You keep on getting with that unsound doctrine stuff. I'm rolling with somebody who's credible. 
And that's the Holy Ghost. And he's going to put me in line with the people he want me to be in with. I don't care about the popularity of the name and click clubs and times. You can have it all. Because it's all going to wash away, baby. It all comes out in the wash. He says over here once again, we got the Jeremiah 33 and I got a roll. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the second time while he was yet shut up in the prison saying, Thus say the Lord, the maker thereof, the, the, the maker thereof, the Lord formed it and established it. The Lord is his name. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee. Look here. Not just great and mighty things. Great in mighty things that thou knoweth not. Can I help somebody here? And I, I, I know I keep saying I got to go, but I'm going I'm to I'm push it. I'm, 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 I don't know. I'm a 400, I'm a 400 meter man. You know, I, I run it. 220 is good, but I'm going to pull a whole track. Listen to me. Look what it says over here. Let's go to Corinthians. Let's go something in Corinthians. I mean, let me hit y'all one more time in Corinthians. And I, I promise you after this, I'm not going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do a second half on this, but I'm going to get out of here. Paul speaks a very strong word over in Corinthians. He makes it all solidified in the spirit. Even when that man of God, John MacArthur, began to bring this word, even though Tony Evans brings it forth, even though these things, Bishop Raymond John, all these, these people, uh, 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 Dr. Von, these, Al Fortes, these guys telling you. But see, they ain't popular in your eyesight because you don't want to hear them. You want your ears itched. So you got to go where your ears get itched. But I'm telling you, when you get before the throne of God, they're going to itch, all right? They're going to itch. They're going to itch the way you never thought they would ever itch. Look at the word of God says over here in 1 Corinthians in this particular um, second chapter in the ninth verse. Most of us know it. Let's look at the eighth verse, first of all. Which none of the princes of this world knew. They still don't know. They still don't know. For if they had known, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. He's not just talking about the God on the cross. He's talking about that word that comes back in there, that Judaizing teaching. Those who speak of things and saying things that be not of their word. I, I'm, I'm, let me be the first one to wave at you. I advertise my stuff on Facebook. I'll wave at you all day long. But I'm telling you, man, I'm not going to get in. Look, you produce a circus, expect a clown. That's the only thing I'm going to tell you. You form a circus, expect some clowns to come. Because they're going to be there. That's all I got to say about that. You need to move on from this social network problem because they're deterring you. The word of God says right here over the night verse. But it has been written. The word is already in putting in place. We read it in the book of Genesis. The establishment. For it has been written. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has it entered in the heart of no man the things that God has prepared. It's already been done. You don't need to recreate anything. Anytime you recreate anything over God, it's a lie. It's false. It's opposing the word of God. Diametrically opposing the word of God. The Bible says, I've laid the foundation and another man come build there upon. Now that's 1 Corinthians 3 and 11. He tells you that. The Bible says, except I build the house. Except I build the house. It's a vain build. He said, but he said, but it has to be revealed to us by the spirit. That's in first Corinthians, that's second chapter in Timber. But it has been revealed them uh, unto us by his spirit. Look what Paul says. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deepest things of God. Now go to the 11th verse. For man only knows the things of a man, but no man knows the things of the spirit. Doesn't matter how many books you wrote. You want somebody to read your writing, or you want to read God's writing. You're gonna put your book over the kingdom of God? I understand you so about encouragement. That's why you got some of these younger generation. They're so, I don't know what's going on anyway. They're so quick at the mouth to say something. Well, they just want to be encouragement. Well, you know what? You, 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 you keep on thinking that. I believe you better get some wisdom before you start opening your mouth. Cause see, when you start listening to every time Dick and Harry start running about everything, it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. The word of God reveals once again, for man knows the things of a man, man and women knows the things of a man. Save the spirit of man which is in him. The Bible says that thing that's in you need to be produced that what the outward man will show the glow in which God designed and engineered you to be. Even so the things of God knoweth no man. Can I go back to what the word of God declares and decrees? It's got to be revealed through the spirit. As it says in verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. Galatians, come on. Walk in the spirit, do not feel the lust in the desires of the flesh. 14, love, 15, don't be, you know, five, all that's in there. 14, the laws of the kingdom, which is love. 
15, comes back in Galatians 5 and 15, tells you don't kick in the bio and scratch and all that, all that stuff. But he tells you walk in the spirit. That's why the word of God says in, over here in the first Corinthians in this particular second chapter. He said, now you have received not the spirit of the world. See, you're separate. But see, 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 see. Why you going to your little clubs and concert, or I'm talking to somebody, or you ain't going to like this, but you're going to get it. Why you out there going to your little clubs, going to your little concerts, having your little peekaboo shows, the earth ran the fire, all your old school stuff, and the world comes, all right, I'm just going to tell you, that's some things that you won't push to touch no more. That's some things you're not supposed to be a part of anymore. But you can't speak the word of God and then dibble and dabble on the devil's side. Oh, you don't hear me talking to you. Because, see, you want God and you want the pleasures of the world. So you want to do a sneak preview into one of your summer fests or this, that, or the other. And then you want to find in Scripture where it tells you it's okay. No, you lied. From the pit, you lied. Says so God say, separate yourself. Now that you come to understand that who I am and what I designed and engineered you to be. Now that you receive the spirit of the world, he said, you, you say, now we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. That we may know the things which are freely given to us of God. Which we speak also. Look here. Speak not. Look at which we also we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. I want to say that over and over again. So he comes down to 13. He makes you know again. What he's saying 13. Which things also we speak not in the worlds, which man's wisdom teaches, but what the Holy Ghost teaches. Comparing what? Spiritual things to spiritual. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. Because I know some of y'all will. And you think you get it twisted? You play with this stuff if you want to. You, you're you going you're gonna to find yourself somewhere that you don't need to be. I'm Apostle Charles Ellis here at HNC Studios. Here in the city of Plano, Texas. We got the man of God coming out of uh, Yahshua Messiah ministry tonight. We're going to be with him. Of course, we got the man of God, the Robinson Group. is coming up here on the 15th here at HNLC Studios also talk about some of the mandate about dealing with your finances, how you can raise your church on a more, uh, not just your church, but you personally in your personal life, how to gain the access back to you, what God has already given to you that comes from what? The kingdom. The Bible said he gave and gave you life. It's to bring a life more abundantly. Most of you act in the Saginaw, Michigan area. You know, Dr. Ronald Robinson is going to be out in that area. You might want to come out and pay him attention. If I actually pull up his little information here and talk about him a little bit, I think he's going to be out there at a Kingdom Empowerment Outreach. You know, it's going to be over there on August 31st. That's going to be 1717 East Genesee Street at Atwater, out there in Saginaw, Michigan. For those who contact him, it's going to be 989 753 4748. That's going to be Dr. Ronald Robinson dealing with the, the Robinson Group. Such a good man. Been knowing Ronald since the, we're going back to the fifth or sixth grade. A good friend of mine. But also, we want to let you guys know also in that same, um, pretty much not in the same group, but tonight we got the man of God that's going to be coming out of you know, Yahshua Ministries out there in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. It's going to be Evangelist Steve and Prophet Joyce Lazar. You know, for those who call in on the show tonight, it's going to be 646-668-8746. We hope to have a good time. That's going to be 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. That's going to be every Monday here at HLC Studios. Of course, the woman of God is always running forth, Patty Ellis. You know, she's always doing the great work that's coming from the kingdom of God. Blessed to all the children, all the kids going back to school today, both young and old. When they look over them and keep them safe, as the word of God protects them and keeps them, especially my beautiful little daughter. You know, she's not old. She's not in um, what you call elementary anymore. She's going to middle school, big chains. A little nervous is there, but God got her. And I want to thank you guys for being a part of the work on today as we continue to move forth and do what God has planned us to do. You know, I love you guys. Y'all take care. Y'all know I come to bring no harm to you, but I come to bring the word which comes from the kingdom of God. Hey, look, God bless you, man. We love you guys. And you guys take care.
Jesus washed. He washed my sins away. Here it comes again, lunch. Will it be the same old, same old? Or are you ready to take a vacation from the ordinary with the new Jamaican Jerk Turkey Sub at Firehouse Subs? Freshly sliced smoked turkey breast, craveably sweet mustard sauce, and a hint of Caribbean seasoning. Just $5.55 for a medium. Save time. Order the new Jamaican Jerk Turkey Sub on the Firehouse Subs app. Firehouse Subs. Enjoy more subs. Save more lives. Participating locations, limited time only, plus tax. Prices may vary for delivery. I can't believe it. That Gerald is presenting the quarterly budget report with finger puppets? Look, here comes a 1.7% decrease in fixed overhead. Hello, everybody. No, I can't believe how easy it was to save hundreds of dollars on my car insurance with Geico. Who are you? The projected increase in organic Q3 revenue. Hooray! Believe it, Geico could save you 15% or more on car insurance.